5,000, 6,000, 7,000. Let's go! Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, where it's my job to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. The channel just crossed 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely wild to me. I wanted to do something fun to celebrate the milestone. Just about a year ago, one of my YouTube idols, Jeff Geerling, did a cool challenge when he reached 10,000 subscribers, in which he set out to spawn 10,000 Kubernetes pods, one for each subscriber. This video is my take on the same challenge, while taking the lessons learned from Jeff's attempts and applying a few tricks of my own. So what's the plan? One, create a cluster. Two, launch a 10,000 pod deployment. Three, four, profit. My initial thought when approaching this challenge was Google Kubernetes Engine Autopilot, which was announced by GCP back in February and offers a fully managed Kubernetes offering. I'd read the announcements about Autopilot, but hadn't tried it out myself, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. While many cloud providers offer managed Kubernetes clusters that manage the details of the control plane, Autopilot also takes ownership of the worker nodes as well. What I didn't realize at the time is that Autopilot enforces a minimum resource request of 250 milli CPU and 512 megabytes of memory. When I launched my 10,000 pod deployment, GKE immediately tried to auto scale up to 2,500 vCPUs, which hit my regional quota of 24 vCPUs and got stuck at just under 100 pods deployed. That approach clearly isn't going to work. Even after I got my quotas for CPUs, in-use IP addresses, and disk space increased, I would still be a couple orders of magnitude away from success. Going back to the drawing board, I thought about what I could change to get closer to the goal of 10,000 pods. First, I can adjust the maximum number of pods that Kubernetes will schedule onto each node. The default value for this is 110 pods per node. Because needing more than 110 pods per node is a pretty rare edge case, most managed Kubernetes offerings don't allow you to modify it. Instead, I'll have to deploy my own control plane. Also, if we make this adjustment and allow this many pods be deployed on each node, this means that each one can only use a tiny amount of resources. Luckily, in my previous video, I built a container image that has a web server written in assembly and is perfect for this use case. With these two tactics, I set out to attempt the challenge again. To provision the cluster, I used a tool called COPS, which is an open source project managed by Kubernetes. Other similar tools that you may have heard of are KubeSpray and KubeADM. With a relatively simple command, I was able to configure a cluster with a single four vCPU control plane node and 44 one CPU worker nodes, bringing me right up to my now higher 48 vCPU quota on GCP. I modified the max pod setting on the kubelet to enable 256 pods per node and granted the etcd service on the control plane in increased resources to help it handle the load. It took a few minutes for the cluster to come online, but once it was ready, I created a simple deployment using my assembly-based container image and set the resource request to just 2 milli CPU and 10 megabytes of memory per pod. I then set the number of replicas to 10,001 and let it rip. I also hacked together a tool to parse the output of kubectl get pods and plot the progress towards my goal so I could track it. Here's how it went. The first thing I did was apply that deployment.yaml file. This will tell Kubernetes to spin up 10,000 copies of that pod. I then invoke my tracking script to call kubectl get pods every 10 seconds, parse those results, and store them in a file that this Python script can read and plot. Immediately, we see the pods start to come online. Just 10 seconds in, we're already over 250 pods, and it appears to be growing linearly. We reached 1,000 in just under a minute. Now the numbers that we're tracking here on the left, there's four things. There's a timestamp, there's the number of pending pods, the number of pods in a container creating state, and then the number of running pods in that right-hand column. We want the right-hand number to go up, and we want the other two numbers to remain relatively small. For some reason, the plotting script crashed, so it stopped updating. I noticed this right about here, and reset it. It was exciting to see that the slope continued to climb linearly, meaning that the API server and scheduler wasn't getting bogged down. Also, the number of pending pods remained quite low, and the number of container creating pods stayed around 1 to 200. The prediction time is just taking the total number of pods that we have running, 
dividing that by 10,000, and scaling it based on the time already elapsed. We're halfway there. The fact that the estimated completion time isn't changing that much is a good sign. We've got 3,000 more pods to go, and expect to take about a little over two minutes. Interestingly, it actually sped up there a bit at the end. We see that the pending pods has gone to zero. There's 51 in container creating state. And now look, they've finished. 10,001 pods all running at once. Because I didn't want to just set the record by one, I figured I would increase the number of replicas in this deployment up to 15,000 just to see how far we can take it. I knew that it wouldn't succeed fully since we don't have enough capacity on our nodes, but I just wanted to see what would happen. The deployment starts to scale up, and immediately we get a bunch of container creating pods, and the number of pending pods starts to climb. At this point, for the first time, we see the number of pending pods greater than the number of container creating. This is because as we hit that max pods threshold for each of these nodes, they become unschedulable. We also get a higher number of container creating pods at the steady state because we've run out of IP addresses on each node to actually use. And that's about as far as we're gonna be able to push it with this current cluster size. 11,119 pods running, 53 stuck in container creating state, and a few thousand in pending. And there we have it, just over 11,000 Kubernetes pods running on a cluster composed of a single control plane node with four CPUs and 44 one CPU worker nodes. Overall, I was pretty pleased with this result and managed to reach my 10,000 pod goal with room to spare. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna learn more about Kubernetes, DevOps, and cloud infrastructure, I'd recommend checking out one of my other videos over there. That's it for today, and remember, just keep building.